dream of any whiskey club and any whiskey enthusiast is to get to Scotland and see the kingdom where the whiskey is made. As a part of SMAC and when we had done multiple whiskey trails, when we had done multiple whiskey tastings, Scotland was always on the radar to make it happen. Coming from a country like India, it always makes it logistically very difficult. Whiskey Wanderlust was to realize that dream, realize that vision as to how we're going to be able to enchant our members with a full-blown whiskey trail across the Scottish Islands. <laughs> SMEC as an organization and as a club has always aspired to do what's beyond or what's not available presently in the whiskey market. Be it limited releases that we have with our club in terms of limited edition bottlings or whiskey trails itself. I think so we have always aimed to ensure that we produce or we give to our members an experience that they will remember for a long time. I think so our Whiskey International Trail started with Singapore where we took some members across to the bars of Whiskey Singapore to experience some very very stellar whiskies, some of which were produced more than 50 years ago and give a sense of accomplishment for the members who are actually tasting those whiskies. So the whiskey tasting community in India is an evolving one. It is evolving at a pace that no other country is at the moment because of the interest and curiosity and probably the potential market that it tends to be. Right now they are on the exploration spree to taste as many whiskies as they can. They are wanting to visit as many distilleries as they can, understanding the character of the whiskey, understanding the story behind the whiskey. I think so all of that makes the community a very very interesting one at the moment. We're a whiskey club, right? Uh, we offer a bunch of whiskey experiences. We've done events, we've done bottle launches, uh, we've uh, brought in a lot of professional glassware to India. And uh, to add to this, I think uh, the journey is only complete when uh, we throw in a whiskey trail. We've done Goa, we've done uh, north of India at uh, Kasoli. Uh, but the most important part of the world producing whiskey is Scotland, and that was missed out all this while. And uh, time was right, we had uh, planned this about two years ago to uh, do a 20 distillery visit in Scotland. Unfortunately, because of uh, COVID, things didn't work out. But uh, August, everything fell into place, including visas and COVID was gone. Great weather and we were able to pull off a, a fantastic tour of uh, Scotland over 10 days. There are a myriad of subjects that actually come to the fore when we're talking about a whiskey trail. And Scotland has got so many options, right from Isla to Highlands and then we have Lowlands and Campbelltown. 
everyone have got their own story to tell subtle differences between these distilleries and these stores make it a really interesting proposition our itinerary of uh, scotland was for about uh, 10 days uh, we had uh, 20 distilleries and a few bars that we put into it. We started at Edinburgh, moved on uh, to uh, the Cairn distillery and did some tasting uh, with uh, Gordon McPhail at their store uh, at Elgin. From there, uh, we visited Glen Livet, Glen Fiddick. Next day, uh, we uh, visited uh, uh, Glen Farklas and then made our way all the way up to Inverness uh, to visit the Tomatin distillery. We moved on to Isla, a full day's uh, travel. We ended the travel with uh, a visit to Casey's Bar. We covered Bormor, of course. Uh, we've uh, been to Brookladi and uh, Punahavin, uh, Adbeg and Lagavulin on a Sunday. They opened the doors for us. Uh, and, and we also covered uh, Kalila and uh, Lafroy. We moved on to Campbelltown where we uh, visited Glen Scotia and uh, the very aspirational Springbank distillery. Uh, a four-hour drive later, we were back uh, at Edinburgh to close the tour. We had a couple of sponsors on board. Uh, I'd need to call out uh, the Godawin brand for coming on board as uh, the pouring partner, as well as uh, the blending water partner, which is Estuary. So the brands supported us immensely in the way that they coordinated between the distilleries that manufactures got a red carpet welcome for people who had never visited the distillery before. Great to know that these brands recognize uh, the importance of growing uh, the community and the culture of whiskey across the country and that they're uh, ready to step out there and, and support you uh, in, uh, in this uh, particular endeavor. What was so special about uh, day one where we did the Gordon and McPhail store at Elgin? Looking forward was saying that what's the kind of whiskies that they're going to sell, I think. So that was a curious point, right? What comes across is that the way that they curate a tasting session, right? I mean the whiskey selection itself as to how they took you to the very depths of space side islands and then pull out something which is probably much more unique. I, I think so that entire experience of the store itself, that quaint store and the signage of Gordon and Maxwell. What an era. I mean, you, you can't beat that. And then there was the Cane Distillery uh, in the middle of the Cane Gom National Park. Such a gorgeous place, uh, if you remember. And there were a few other things about that place. Uh, it was about the swanky, sparkling new equipment, the latest tech that they used. Uh, there was also the warmth that they experienced center, the food they served there, uh, the lush lawns and the river spay that was flowing right beside the distillery. The day after, we started with uh, Glenlivet. Who doesn't know Glenlivet? I mean, if you're any way related to whiskey, even as remote as India was in terms of, you know, introduction to single malt scotch whiskey. Glen Levitt and Glen Fiddick are like, you know, everyone's probably start point, isn't it? I mean, and the way that they curated the tour for us in Glen Levitt, right? If you remember, if you recollect that showcase of Glen Levitt, do you remember these bottles that you saw? There? And, and uh, Ethan was very kind. It was very kind of the brand to ensure that someone like Ethan was there to take us through the tasting and things like that. And, and, and so was Glenn Fiddick, it was, it was special, uh, Brian and Kevin, they took us around, uh, made us feel like it was home and uh, put out a lovely bunch of whiskies for us to taste at the distillery. You, you know, one of the things that happened at Glenn Fiddick was because my old man, my dad, who inspired me to get into whiskey, and Glenn Fiddick was his, you know, probably his poison, so to say. As soon as I saw that, uh, a signage of Glen Fiddick at the distillery. I took a selfie and sent it back to my dad saying that finally landed the flag there, dad, saying that it was Glen Fiddick. The next thing we did was uh, visit the Glen Grant distillery. So much of history, legacy and Dennis Malcolm there. Do you know what, what else was special about the place? Do you remember? The Garden of Splendor, right? I mean, I think so that's also one of the highlights of the entire tour where uh, Dennis Malcolm took us to the Garden of Splendor, served us that uh, whiskey there, 
right from the springs take take the water out and the pictures there the tranquility there well i have been to a few tastings in in terms of different environments in different settings that was unique i mean tasting a whiskey absolutely from the cold springs of that place that was very very unique wasn't it the the family casks at uh, glen farclas oh my god we've got to be privileged i i mean do you remember the entire experience of getting into glen farclas that stunning red that they paint the warehouse doors with i think so that sign is that greets you when you talk about glen farclas and then the that you know again that legendary cupboards that they have with regard to the but when i looked at those bottles i mean those are aspiration goals right for you as a whiskey connoisseur saying that all right that's something that you got to probably taste at some point in time in your life and the tasting room by itself the way that it was converted from the interior of the ship that story my god the wood the styling i think so tomato was a surprise for me scott krish graham the way that they you know pulled out the red carpet for us that was super special i think so if you people haven't got the martin on your uh, you know whiskey trail road map do have because that place is changing that place is changing for the good they've got a great tour they've got a great tasting session absolutely insane we move over to isla and uh, at bunahavin the paps of oh. jura look their most beautiful i think that's the most picturesque of them all in terms of distilleries that would be probably the place to actually enjoy a whiskey right i mean look at the view look at the way that the water meets the land there and the mountains the fauna absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous. and we had our uh, members uh, using velinches to to uh, suck out the whiskey from the barrels in in bomo yeah, yes yeah. Yeah, Lynn from Bomo, right? She was absolutely generous with her hand in terms of pouring out the Bomo 25, which is an expensive whiskey, so to say. But but the vault number one of Bomo has got something, right? I mean, the very experience of looking into a warehouse like that from the glass doors gives you a sense of how much time has passed. from when that's been set out and where we are today sunday every place was closed but then um thanks to the folks at uh, kalila lafroig uh, adbeg and uh, lagavulin mm. we were able to do four distilleries on a sunday so they were very accommodative I forget the f- number 4 okay just to register the names that you have just taken oh. i i mean we are talking about kalila I I don't think so if I know my stats right I don't think so there's any distillery that produces as much as spirit that Kalila does in terms of volume we start there and then we have Lafrag which is I think so one of the most popular drinks within the group itself then we went to Lagavulin and we just didn't go to Lagavulin we met Ian McArthur I mean it was his last few days of being a warehouse manager and the legend takes a bow after that i i think so i just saw a post a few weeks ago saying that he's finally retired having to get a chance of an experience like that with him that that was super special and then jackie from adbeg we didn't really have that on the agenda but the way that she was actually pulled the group together said that I am going to do the tasting for our tour for uh, this bunch who's come from India. That that was that's something that you can't really plan for, no, can you? I, I didn't expect that. Yeah. That. So, what are your thoughts about that uh, distillery that produces gin along with uh, whiskey, which is Brookladi? The the one thing that you know always stuns me about is the catalog of the whiskies that they collect. every single release that they had what an experience the yellow submarine behind it and <laughs> a very vibrant place and we also got to see ugly betty oh yeah Th- that was something that they wouldn't have expected right 
botanist gin being made from the same distillery that produces octomore and you know brooklandi how do you like springbank they make some of the most phenomenal whiskies and the cage bottles are special they're uh, bottling it by hand and they think that some cask is ready they fill the bottle and they put it in the cage and everybody who goes there has got to pick up something from the cage i i thought springbank the the entire tour was so entertaining if you remember i mean that's one brand right that doesn't want to progress in terms of technology they want to keep it people centric they want to make those errors but it also ends up producing some phenomenal whiskies right so you remember at glen scotia there was the only place where in the warehouse we saw the barrels standing upright and not on their side yeah the pallet stacking right that was pallet really stacking unique. very unique very unique so different and even the distillery itself i mean you wouldn't expect the distillery to be in a part of a town <laughs> not something that we'd expect from a distillery each one is a stand out and so different from each other but when you think about the entire tour her distilleries the scenic beauty all came together very well i thought but the people to coming together the group coming together that that was i think so very very harmonious i think so i haven't seen a whiskey blending together like that as the group blended together um i got to call out uh, george because if it wasn't for him most people wouldn't know what they were eating <laughs> they fig- you figured that whatever was served in the menu was absolutely alien to them and if not for george they wouldn't know what they were putting in their mouths and another top tip for people who are planning whiskey trips get a chef on board and uh, the gentleman of the tour the absolute gents you mean i mean you mean the army general who had the badges uh, you know flashed across you, you must actually if this video is going to be short we should have david and his you know proud chest as a part of this narrative when you actually bring this video together and rohit was i think so he found his space in laugh rank the you know the place that you actually look for saying that pin your place this is the place yes. that you own i think so i finally found it in a few words i would just say it is awesome i think very enriching and actually it's a very very spiritual ex- experience for me now i do understand why it is important to experience whiskey in a way that is enjoyable and now when i go back i'm going to be i'm going to be much more mature individual in the sense that i can now read labels can understand labels be able to get those flavors out joy and his banter with uh, the doctors especially the hyderabad tones to top it all i think so we had great company from his wife yes. uh, indrani was absolutely phenomenal uh, she she was great company she was another whiskey geek at the end of the day i suppose this has been amazing the stories the history the locations they all grow up on you and what grows up on you most is the you know the infectious energy of everybody around you it's it's about sheer passion and energy and excitement and love for tradition and appreciation of the finest finest possible flavors and nuances of life that's what it has been for me uh, i've been drinking whiskey for 16 17 years something like that but I think in the last one week my whiskey journey got accelerated I felt like somebody strapped on rocket boosters onto my journey and and it just went from there but only a part of it I think was the whiskey uh, it was Scotland first of all the place the landscapes the beauty it is overwhelming it is an attack on the senses at least for somebody who's not seen this part of the world before being a big fan of whiskies I never thought so uh, that uh, i would come all the way down to scotland and visit all these magnificent places all the distilleries along with a uh, really really fun bunch of uh, gentlemen uh, some of them who have been into the journey for ages together such as krishna this trip of harsha and hemant by smsc is the best trip trip i have ever had so far my last 20 years of visits to aila if you know somebody at the distillery like uh, we uh, smsa guys do your visits are special absolutely brilliant overall this trip was a very very rejuvenating experience for me going back whenever i have some good whiskies say for 
a good scotch i will definitely remember the seas and the landscape the rivers yeah it's been an absolutely outstanding trip all the while just like the whiskey aging every day it got better and better as we went through each single day of our trip and trust me scotland is one place to visit for the whiskies it is just not the knowledge that you get but also the experience of talking to people who produce this whiskies when you are drinking the whiskey far far away and when you recall the stories about the, about the process that this has gone through it's real magic a great experience would be a too short a word to describe that it's a uh, to describe it um from ticking off uh, distilleries of your bucket list to tasting many many great drams it has been a wonderful experience the best part of it was to you get to do this with your malt mates right i love the tour i love the tasting i love the people of uh, scotland uh, and uh, the camaraderie between uh, everybody who traveled like minded people loving whiskies and at the end of uh, uh, that that whole tour i think uh, we parted like one big happy family uh, things it's it's a phenomenal uh, uh, story that i'll always remember and, and i'll keep narrating this story right through my life where does sme you see go from here whiskey haroki i think so that's what we are calling our forthcoming tour to japan really look forward to another experience from completely different style of whiskey completely different culture it must be a very very interesting theme to see as to how japanese food japanese whiskey street the indian palate what we wanted to give as an experience was a cohesive whiskey trail not concentrating only upon distillery tours and whiskey tastings we wanted people to enjoy the company we wanted people to enjoy the whiskey we wanted people to enjoy the distillery trails but just the right amount of balance that pulls together the scenic beauty of scotland the culture the food the whiskey the distilleries the people all of them was probably something like an aspirational goal for us in terms of the whiskey wanderlust so it's a really really difficult trail to pull together especially when you're traveling from different parts of the world but when it all culminates into that one very successful picture that one very successful tour that tasting that people will remember for their lifetimes i think so that's the satisfaction that smac actually gets and that inspires us for our future tours